So this is a video it's based on the recap of the past year, the year 2023. It was definitely a good year for me. Definitely a big turnaround in my humble opinion. We were slowing down with content. I was actually gonna quit streaming. I was gonna quit making YouTube videos or just making content altogether. And all of that kind of turned around. For me, Valorant actually did a good job for that for me because I was able to make some good connections with a variety of different people, find a crowd of individuals that I enjoyed to be around. And it was cool. It was a cool little process and maybe had a good time. I had a fun time finding similar people like myself. Also became a VTuber. Basically what a VTuber is, a virtual online person or entertainer that uses like a certain graphic. So that could be somebody who uses a picture or somebody who uses like an actual character that actually moves in real time, which is actually really cool. It's pretty nice. For me, I'm a PNG tuber. So a PNG tuber is somebody who uses PNGs to talk or speak. I really enjoy the VTuber community. They actually welcome me with open arms. And I was searching for kind of like a group of people that would kind of accept me and help me grow. And that was really awesome. I didn't, that wasn't on my, the end of the year or something that I was looking forward to. I didn't think that was going to be happening at all. And it happened very seamlessly. Also with Valorant, I, I wasn't thinking that I was going to be creating Valorant content. And that was really fun too. Also rediscovering the love of making videos. So I made a lot of short videos, a lot of short videos. It's been awesome. And also rediscovering the love of trying to make full length YouTube videos too. Also just just trying to utilize the skills that I've learned across the years. I've been doing streaming for six years, which is insane. And looking at a lot of my older content, I've definitely grown so, so much. It's been awesome just trying to engage with a variety of different people. I'm grateful for the audience that I have. You know, when it comes to YouTube, my audience is a little bit more lopsided, meaning that I have a lot more Japanese people that consume my content. But when it's not YouTube content and it's different platforms, I have a lot more English speakers who consume my content. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been cool just to try to navigate this area and, and, and whatnot and just trying to figure out the balance of it, just trying to figure out what works. You know, you know, I've put out at least a hundred videos that have subtitles and that was working for a bit. And then I was hitting a wall and I was like, man, I wonder why people are not understanding my videos. And then I was like, yo, let's try Japanese voiceovers. And that's a thing where people are able to understand. I was like, wow, that's that's funny. When it comes to trial and error, you kind of have to figure out like what's working and what doesn't work. And it's nice though, when you're not hot, or I guess when you're not getting that many views, or if you're not getting that much engagement, you have to figure out like what is going on? What What is that thing? Trying to figure out and trying to balance that has been a fun puzzle to figure out what's going on with me. Is my content good? Is it bad but it was a nice uh measuring stick to figure out like okay what's what's reaching people what's not reaching people how can i learn from my mistakes that was like the ultimate thing just creating these narrated videos too I, that was a piece of content i didn't think that was going to happen you know i was putting out so many short form videos basically some short videos whether it's youtube shorts tiktok or instagram and i was like man this is not reaching the audience it needs to let's see if we can f find or let's say if we can create a conversation for people people to join in. And that's where I got the idea of making narrated content again. What are some trendy topics that people really care about and how we can make that discussion? It's been really cool. It's been awesome just trying to pick people's brain and figure that out with the short form content. It's been good for my short form content. It's all English. So if you're somebody who's Japanese, you probably will have a hard time for that. But when it comes for the long form content videos, I will say for my Japanese people, I will definitely put out some content for you guys, which is pretty nice. And, you know, put it into a longer form video. I think that's something that people would definitely enjoy. So cool. Just rediscovering the love for video games again, rediscovering the love for putting out stuff that you used to love and just rediscovering that. So it's been awesome, so, you know, having fun with the games that I was like, man, I'm super passionate about it and it's cool to rediscover that i think for me i just had to take some time take a break and actually mature i think that's the one thing about creating content or doing live streaming for a long time you have to mature and sometimes you have to take a step back and it's like what is necessary to be in a good headspace what is necessary to put the best version of yourself without burning out you know there was a period of time where i burnt out and i had to rediscover why do i love doing this i love connecting with people across the world it's insane how people can connect with with content like that i just i just get a, a joy from replying to comments so if you comment on on this, I, I definitely will try to respond as much as I can. I love interacting.
interacting with people. And it's been fun. It's been a nice journey seeing if I can give value to different people. And I think that's one of the most interesting things about that. And you have to be willing to take that risk. If you feel like this year, I'm going to change. I'm going to be a better me. And the only way to do that is you have to try. And then once you find that formula, you just keep trying to perfect it and trying to craft it. It's been, it's a fun little journey for me. This is probably the most active I've ever been on social media ever, where I'm just simply just grateful, you know, feel like I'm starting at square one. What can I do better? How can I handle certain things? The one thing I, I will say, it's easy to gain it. It's harder to maintain it. And that's honestly the truth. No matter what, you can have the most follows, the most subscribers, but to be able to maintain that attention, to maintain all the viewership, you have to put in that hard work in. And it's tough. It is really tough. A lot of people would think that, hey, you make a lot of money off of this. And honestly, you really don't really make that much unless you're well established. To be consistent every day and day out is pretty difficult. You know, just to be your own manager, your own editor, to be able to keep Keep up with a lot of things. It's way easier to, you know, work just a, a regular job if you were trying to balance this. But when you're ready, you're ready. I know some people feel the need to try to do this full time, but you don't have to do this full time. You can keep this as a, a little part time hobby if you want to. And I think that's the most joy of it when it comes to creating content and trying to figure out the skills. For me, I'm just trying to figure out how to be a better host, a better broadcaster, a better narrator, maybe someone who's better at podcasting because I've done that in the past. So I'm using skills that I've done before, but just trying to, I guess, dust myself off, just trying to restore myself. It's been fun. It's been a fun little journey. Thank you for the wild ride and being with me. So I'll catch you guys later. Bye.